Hey all, my name's Tyson, and today we're going to talk about Christina Inneroth's laser tools. Yes, we're going to talk about lasers. Pew pew! Um, <laughs> our friend Christina Inneroth, prolific extension creator, recently came out with a new extension, and uh, this is something kind of a a project of her own because she does a lot of uh, laser cutting for train modeling. But I think you'll find this extension useful even beyond that. Certainly if you do use lasers, CNC or other uh, machines like that, this is gonna be really cool. But even if you don't like say, you still might find some of these features pretty interesting and useful. So let's have a look. All right. This is the the uh, toolbar icon for this. Again, these are just laser off inner uh, laser tools. Did I say <laughs> inner off laser tools? Um, really simple example of what they will do. They're primarily made for creating simple models and and then giving them thickness and creating box joints. So I've created this, right? It's just surfaces. If I select all this, the first option here will give us a thickness. So let's say this is quarter inch and we'll just call this plywood. And what it has done is turned every surface into its own unique uh, component. So that alone is, is pretty interesting. Then this tool, if I start clicking on some of these corners, you can quickly see what's going to happen here. It is starting to create the actual box joints um, and where it can, it creates it between two different components. And so that is also something that is really uh, interesting. Let's create a real example here. I mean, this is, but let's say we're going to create a storage box. Um, let me just say one foot by eight inches, something that would fit on a, a reasonable laser cutter. And we'll pull this up six. Now, if I wanted to use this, I could just simply delete this top and grab these and create thickness and start working. Let's, before we do that, let's say, you know what, I want to create a handle on here. So let's do it just a little bit more. Uh, work. Let me find the center point here and and create a curve for our handle. I will flip this and erase the edges we don't need. to draw this out and the last thing that would do is create a little bit of a, a finger grip so now we might take more care for this um, use some measurements something like that, but this will work just fine for our example. So I'm going to select these surfaces, delete them, and delete this as well. Now what I'm going to end up doing is taking this surface and this one and mirroring them. So I'm not worried about these back surfaces at this point. I do want to leave them in place. So I'm going to select all of this and use this tool. Uh, again, I'll say quarter inch is fine, but we could use a different uh, thickness. And there's the start of our box. So let's start breaking this out into the um, box joints that we need. Now, you can change the number of um, uh, box joints here, the, the, this number, 
if I type in, let's just type a few numbers, one and hit enter. This is going to be a relationship of, of the thickness of the material. So it's kind of just uh, playing around with it. If I type two and hit enter, three hit enter, four hit enter. But I can also, if I type a unit of measurement, so let's say I want this to be 1.5 inches, it is going to try to create something close to one and a half inches. Now, based on what the length of this, it, it's not doing it exactly because it's trying to give me an even split, but it's getting close. So let me say 1.25 inches and let's go with that. Now I want to be a little bit careful. See, it's giving me a preview and whatever I choose, let's say this, I just want to mirror that over here. So I want to be careful that I choose the same option on this side. And let's do this back here. Same thing there and there. And I'm doing that more for this piece than for that back piece. And then let's come down here. And you can see that we, we're not getting the green. On this case, we are still, and maybe I'll go ahead and um, I could accept that. But here it's, um, you know, sort of an orange or yellowish because it's not gonna cut both of these. And maybe that's, uh, and, and that's in some cases just because of, of a limitation of the geometry. The other thing I wanna do, I think here, is say, you know what, I have more space, I'm gonna, take uh, two inches and change so I have a, a, a bigger segmentation. But I might do both and that gives me something to start with on this bottom surface because now I could say, okay, up here, I need to now make some adjustments here and say, okay, this I will pull to here. So it's not necessarily, depending on what you're doing, gonna give you exactly everything you need, but this certainly um, propelled us really uh, far along the path. And now we just have to go through and make some adjustments. And depending on how we do these corners, we'll, we may need to resolve this in a different way. And again, I was saying I would probably, because again, each of these is unique. This is, these are not mirrored. So I might at this point say, let me grab this one, this piece, and I will just move them to the side and then flip them just so that we can see what we're doing here and then move them back into place. And they could continue building out um, this bottom piece and making sure that it resolves nicely with the rest of the geometry and so forth. So we'd have a little bit more work to do, but wow, that is so cool. Uh, very cool tool, uh, Christina. Very excited about what this will do. It, it makes uh, certain things a lot easier, a lot faster. Now, what it will do um, for actually laying out your cut is once I have all my pieces assembled and ready to, this icon, this final tool will, it's gonna say, what spacing do you want? Let's just, I'll accept the default and it's gonna lay them all out flat. Now, depending on how uh, I, you know, my cutter works, I might make some other adjustments to this, but at least again, I have this amazing starting point uh, where they've all been flattened and I can sort of lay out the, the different uh, view that I need and then I'd go to, of course, a top view, turn perspective off, and export this out as a DWG or some vector format that I could then feed into whatever software I'm using uh, or directly to the laser.
So that is super cool. I think, um, you know, very interesting. And then the other piece of this, so again, maybe you're not creating box joints like this, but just this last piece where we flattened everything out should be interesting. And in the next video, I want to explore just kind of that aspect of it and say, what if we have something like this where, oh, uh, I want to build this clock. I've, I've modeled it out, but I need to lay it out into the parts, created parts list and stuff. There are extensions to do that, but this one could help us just do a really quick rudimentary version. So we'll explore that in the next video. So there we go. I think it's really cool. You create your box joints, uh, create spacing on them. It certainly, you know, the ability to, to resolve two corners at once, and that doesn't always work, but it still is when it does, it's just, it's pretty awesome. Uh, I'm excited about that extension. So let us know what you think about it, whether or not you would use it for laser or CNC. And again, we'll explore another example in our next, uh, in a future video. Otherwise, just let us know uh, if you have other questions or other topics you'd like to, us to cover. We'd love to do that and have that conversation with you. As always, uh, thanks all. Do like and subscribe and we will see you next time.